guys! Happy Valentine's Day! If you do have a Valentine, then congratulations to you on finding a decent specimen of a human male that actually exists. Because all my crushes exist in the fictional universe. And so I thought today of all days, I'd figure out who that actually is. Let's take a test. This one is from quiblo.com. I'll link it down below if you want to do it as well. Number one. Question number one, in an ideal relationship, your boyfriend would always tell you exactly what he was thinking about something. Definitely, probably not, only if the two of you had been together for a while, only if he was in a good mood. Sure, then he'd tell you how beautiful and extraordinary and wonderful you were. I guess that's the answer for the super confident people. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with definitely. That is, honesty, honesty is always the best policy, isn't it? Okay. Your perfect guy is very understanding of people's flaws. Wait, that's not a question, actually. Okay. But here, here are the options. He doesn't care about people's flaws one way or the other. People are only flawed if they can't see how wonderfully beautiful you are. <laughs> he understands people have flaws and sometimes he forgives them and sometimes he doesn't. No, he is not. Yes, he absolutely is. Well, I don't really get what they mean by understanding of people's flaws, like everybody has flaws and you kind of have to just deal with it, don't you? So I'm gonna go with... <laughs> I just so want to go with people are only flawed if they can't see how wonderfully beautiful I am. That's just really appealing. I'm gonna pick that answer. Number three. Above all else, what would your perfect guy be attracted to in you? Good grammar. Okay. Your passion, your flirtatious nature, your beauty, your compassion, your intelligence. What is it only have to be one? I wish I had all. Was it five? Five. Well, I think, yeah. Well, we can cross off compassion. <laughs> Don't think I'm compassionate. Don't think I'm very passionate either. Let's go with intelligence. I think like that's the emancipated answer, like 21st century answer you should pick. Number four, <laughs> the flaw you could most easily accept in a boyfriend would be A, the fact that he rarely confides in you. B, that he's infatuated with your beauty. <laughs> the flaw, why is that a flaw? I'd be like, yo, go for it. Number three, his wild and unpredictable moods. Number four, that he takes himself a little too seriously at times. Or number five, that he's too naive. Oh my god, four and five are like really bad. I want to pick both R really, really badly because people that are naive drive me crazy. Is it naive? 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 I wish I knew English. That would be pretty awesome. Okay, no, I'm gonna go with that he takes himself a little too seriously at times because I can't stand people like that. You gotta be able to laugh at yourself. It's just that's a fact of life. Five. What is the quality you most look for in a person? Chivalry, mystery, integrity, optimism, and passion. Hmm. Probably optimism. Optimism is really important. Mystery is always nice, especially in a fictional character. Or integrity is also really important. Really important. Let's go with integrity. You gotta be integrity. Delicious. Gotta have integrity. Number six, if you met your ideal guy at a party, he would most likely do which of the following on your first encounter? Smile at you briefly and then talk with all the other girls in the room ignoring your existence. He would immediately ask you to dance and then declare his love for you. Please don't, whatever you do, don't do that. He would ask you for your phone number as soon as he saw you. Also kind of strange. He would go over and talk with you casually. He wouldn't say anything to you or to anyone else because he's clearly uncomfortable in large groups of people. No, that's me. You can't be that either. That's, that's, that's my, my spot. No, wait. I'm gonna pick... He would go over and talk with you casually because I think that the best relationships come out of friendships. How would your ideal guy tell you he loved you? Not at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it was just not in a cheesy way. He would give you a red rose and tell you under the moonlit sky. I would shoot myself. He would tell you secretly by whispering in your ear. Whispering in ears is such a weird thing. Like it drives me crazy when people do that. I just go like, oh my god, it's so, I don't know. Don't you get that feeling of like, 
shivers running down your back, but not in a good way, like it really, oh my, ugh, I don't, I don't know, it kind of tickles. Maybe that's fine. He would wait until whenever you were alone together and tell you plainly and openly. He would scream it out loud and not care who heard. I thought that sentence would end differently. He would write you a letter and leave it for you to read. I don't know, I don't think that you should plan something like that. I don't think you should plan to tell someone you love them. Like, if you love them, then tell them, but don't make such a big fucking deal out of it. I don't know, just, yeah, I guess plainly and openly it is. God, everything's so complicated. Which of these authors do you enjoy the most? William Shakespeare, Emily Bronte, Charles Dickens, misspelled out, Charlotte Bronte, Jane Austen, probably Jane Austen. But Charles Dickens writes so well. I still haven't finished The Tale of the Cities, but oh my god, his self writing is amazing. But I haven't really read him, so he can't really judge. I don't know, both, but let's pick Jane Austen. In your opinion, an ideal relationship should most be wild and intoxicating, full of mystery, like a solid friendship. <laughs> when two people compliment each other, something based solely on feelings and not on judgment. I don't know, wild and intoxicating, I guess? But like, that if that's impossible to keep up forever. Like, maybe that that's good at the beginning, but then it would get really exhausting. I don't know, like a solid friendship in brackets with benefits, obviously, because if it's just a friendship, then it, there's no relationship part to it. What sort of music would your ideal man listen to? I really don't give a fuck. But anything, yeah, good, anything really. I think that's the PG version of my answer. 11, what's your favorite color? Red, sky blue, dark purple or black, dark orange or yellow, forest green. <laughs> forest is spelled with a double R. <laughs> now I just would like to see what forest gum looks as a, like as a color. Awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna pick forest green. I mean, I love green and I love forest gum, so that's two birds with one stone. Your best first date would be which of the following? A nice dinner followed by a game of cards, perhaps with a group of friends included. Dancing followed by good conversa conversation, some of which may border on heated conversation. A quiet visit, I don't think that's an event. A quiet visit to an art gallery, a wild party, dinner and then back to the apartment for a steamy something more. <laughs> with hyphens, good job. No, wait, let me think. I think probably a uh, nice dinner followed by a game of cards because I love dinner. I suck at cards. Friends are also good. Sure. I think first dates are also like a lot of people make such a fuss about first dates. So I think if you're like actively trying to make even casual and like even non-committal situation basically where there's other people as well, I think that's the best thing to do. Your favorite type of music? Folk, rock and roll, country, R&B, oldies. Like none of them, but like probably rock and roll, the closest. <laughs> Your favorite new, new, newbie, newbie, movie? Casablanca, West Side Story, Gun with, Gun with the Wind, Notorious, Roman Holiday. I have seen zero of these movies. I haven't even heard of Roman, Roman Holiday or Notorious. I have watched, I think I know West Side, like, oh no, I've seen West Side Story, let's just pick that one. Which type of dog do you like best? Pitbull, Beagle, Golden Retriever, Fox Terrier, Mastiff. Mine, a Springer Spaniel. No, but I don't hate, I hate Pitbulls, I hate Beagles, I hate Terry Ors. <laughs> they should be called Fox Terriers, actually. I think I'm gonna go with, I don't even know what all, the, all, what all these look like. I'm gonna go with Golden Retriever, because that's always a safe answer. But then they're gonna be like, you need someone who's safe and caring. I don't, I don't know what that, says about anything. How would your ideal guy dress? Professionally, fashionably, plain jeans and a t-shirt, whatever, lots of darker colors and shades of gray. No, that's, that doesn't say that. I said that. No, plain jeans and a t-shirt, because that's what I do. Your favorite kind of shoes? Sneakers, plain, somewhat formal shoes, hiking boots, stilet. Oh my god, <laughs> the spelling errors. <laughs> I will, I can't, I can't, it's too much. Still letters, letter knee high boots. Sneakers, I just usually wear like 
ballet flats, but whatever. Your ideal location, the country, the wilderness, traveling back and forth, the city, Paris, city of love. <sighs> traveling back and forth, I guess, I like traveling. Do you like your ideal man to show you how he feels? Always, never. <laughs> no, he can't. <laughs> Only when he wants, needs to. Of course. Only if it's him declaring his love for me, most of the time. Only when he wants, needs to. I mean, why would you pressure someone into showing you feelings that they don't want to share? What's the point of that? What is your favorite kind of restaurant? Indian, Delhi, spicy Mexican, classy, Italian, French. Italian. Oh my gosh, Italian food is so good. What now? Submit my answers. Okay. <gasps> yes, I win at life. <laughs> Mr. Darcy, here's proof. Proof that, proof, proof, show you. Look at that. Ugh. You like Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice. He's intelligent, values his privacy, and has very high standards and morals. He gives much of himself to his friends, but in return, he also expects much. One weakness is that he's relentlessly unforgiving by nature. This said, he's genuine, sincere, and shy. He may take himself too seriously at times, but he more than makes up for it in generosity. Awesome. That is the best possible outcome. I love Mr. Darcy. So this is probably the best Valentine's Day ever because I've never had a better Valentine and I never will. So yeah, Mr. Darcy is pretty much impossible to beat. So the link to the quiz will be down below. So go do it yourself and then leave a comment telling me what your literary Valentine is and uh, good luck to you, but I'm sorry, you're not gonna beat mine. It's not possible, it is not. Awesome. Okay, so now that we've established that I can go and wish you a lovely week. I'm gonna see you guys soon. Bye!